Hello and welcome to another video from the Tradelands Nation. This is our monthly world report. As usual, we start today's broadcast with a look at the economy. As of the closing bell on March 31st, the MNG15 index is down 6.62% to close at 26,684. This is due to lackluster demand for building materials through the month of March. The green chips are closing at 15,319, losing 746 points, a loss of 4.87% overall. And finally, the earnings index closed up nearly 1.25%, ending at 51,548, a gain of 621 points. While the earnings index closes up for the month, the mid-month slide betrays a bigger concern for the economy. Players appear to be limiting the amount of trading they're doing in anticipation of the upcoming April and May releases. The negative trends in the pricing indexes were all triggered around the same time that the bi-weekly dev blogs are released. A deeper look at the trends seemed to indicate that there was actually a positive outlook on what is being described in those blogs. Lower price points indicate that sellers are pricing items at discounts in order to sell them quickly and to save up their doubloons. This is a sign that there is actually very good hype for these changes that are to come, and people are saving up to buy things once they are released. And of course, one of the biggest and most important changes that are occurring in those blogs is the housing update. While we are also incredibly excited to see what awaits with this, there's also mixed feelings with the understanding that this will likely be our last broadcast from this location on Whitecrest. We expect that this house, the Red House on Whitecrest Island, where we currently are recording our videos, will be purchased by another player, and we will therefore be relocating to a new location. But as of yet, we have not decided where that will be. Let's take a few minutes and talk about this housing update in a bit more detail. As it will be an important factor, especially if you are a casual player looking at this as your chance to open your very first glowy shop as soon as this release comes out. In the Q&A, the developers indicated that houses which are located in desirable locations, specifically mentioned are private islands and capitals, will have a higher buy price. Depending on how you interpret that definition, that's every island in Tradelands. It includes Mallorca, but it doesn't include Salem? So every house in Tradelands will be more expensive. For the record, most houses that are the same size in the landlord today are between 50000 to 80000 so you can expect to sink at least that much of your daily income into your house if you are choosing to go this route. The second factor is availability. There are currently around 135 to 150 houses in Tradelands on the map today. That range is depending on what you classify as a house, such as the 4-in-1 monstrosity that exists on Nova Balresca. Is that 4 houses or 1? There's also houses in Mallorca which may or may not be included. But regardless, the day we recorded this video, there were 224 players online, well above the current number of 150, which is the number of houses available. Meaning, even if every player in the game could afford a house, there aren't enough for all players. And that means this update is probably meant for the most privileged players in trade lands, not the casual ones. Our advice is to set your expectations accordingly. Don't get us wrong though, we are incredibly excited to see this update come to life as it could be a game changer for traders who want to put their own shop on the map. In order to do our part in helping new players set up their very first shop, we've created a new section of the price guide which provides all of the prices for items based on their prefixes of the various items that you might buy and sell in game. As an example of how this works, I have on my back a marvelous chrome katana. In this new module, I go to the katana section. And in the search box, I type in marvelous chrome and I can see the price filtered only to items with that specific prefix. That's what's out there today and it's a starting point. It includes over 3 million data points, so the page will load quite slowly. Please be patient with us. We are eventually going to expand this to include other items and work on improving the performance of the page itself. We also would like to hear from you if there are any specific items that you would like listed so we can prioritize those first. In other news, there are reports that the fishermen of the Grand Isles may be going on strike. This is causing the price of fish to destabilize. Red Drum, Tarpon, and Tuna are already seeing this volatility impact the bond market, with Tarpon 
now at an interest rate of 10.7%, up from 1% two months ago. The reason for the volatility on tarpon is its use in fish oil, which have been one of the leading reasons for the calls to strike. The value of fish oil has gone from almost 400 per piece down to 275 per piece in the course of just two months. It remains to be seen if the fishermen's strike will amount to anything other than a localized disruption or if it will impact the market at large. And finally, the most important and late breaking development, Whitecrest goes to war. Not willing to simply let Nova Balresca occupy half of the trade lands unopposed, King Zack has finally decided to unleash the war machine he has quietly been building over the past few months. It quickly became known that the core of the fleet was headed for Salem. The black plumes of smoke rose from the various Poseidons in this fleet in what many believed to be the greatest war machine ever assembled, seeing the opportunity before him to win a decisive victory against the pride of the trade lands, to be the first chancellor in the history of Nova Balresca to bring the entirety of the Grand Isles under the crimson flag of Nova Balresca. Chancellor Stray decided that this would be it. He dispatched his greatest war fleet, his finest soldiers, the veterans of so many of his victories, to confront King Zack at the island of Salem. Once a mere trade stop and a backwater island was about to become the scene for the greatest clash in military history. As soon as the smoke cleared, of course, and the two fleets prepared to meet each other head on. They were deceived. One of the greatest themes throughout the reign of King Zack has been his strategic genius, his ability to be underestimated, only to have his opponents realize the mistake once it was too late. The ploy at Salem drew all of Nova's finest away from the true battle zone. As the fleet of warships weaved their way through the rocky cliffs of Blackwind Cove, King Zack's masterstroke was about to be unleashed. But there is more to be told in this story. After the defeat of the pirate king at the hands of Nova, a group of pirates turned on their fellow marauders. They were the turncoats, the Novan sympathizers. While they fly the black flag, their hearts are corrupted with Novan doubloons. But not all of these pirates capitulated. Hailing from their base on the Dagger Isles, a federation of free pirates still marauded the seas. Now their ironclad warships raced into the Grand Isles, led by their Poseidon flagship. They were ready to make history. Will they be here in time though to make a difference in the events to come? Historians may debate for many years whether it was just another part of King Zack's master plan or merely a stroke of luck and coincidence. Only the king himself and the members of this federation of pirates will ever know the truth. But what is not in doubt is what occurred next. This picture, taken the moment Captain Caesar's ship, the Merrimack's Revenge, cut off the Novan sympathizer's only escape route from the incoming Whitecrest Navy. Flying its pirate flag high and proud, it sparked a furious vengeance among the people of Blackwind and they rose up against their Novan occupiers, boarded their ships, and killed their crews. And within minutes, the entire reserve fleet of Nova Balresca was gone. The pirate crews raised their Jolly Rogers, took to the seas to do what pirates do best, to pillage and burn the very heart of Nova's success, its trade routes. Blackwind was reborn. The remnants of the fleet was then captured by the Whitecrest Navy, added to their growing naval superiority. Then the next part of King Zack's plan took hold, and what followed was a slaughter. With the main fleet bottled up in Salem, unable to extricate themselves due to the constant barrage of attacks on the island, the forces of Whitecrest, piece by piece, cracked open the empire built by Chancellor Stray. At this moment, he must have realized Coming so close to being the first Chancellor to conquer all of Tradelands, 
now he may be the second chancellor in history to watch a nation that bears the name Valresca going extinct, with the only survivors being that of what could be called the Stray Expedition. But just as it looked like the very end of Nova, King Zack, once again underestimated, demonstrated one of the greatest and least common characteristics of a great leader, and that is mercy. Declaring a week of peace, he allowed the Chancellor and his fleet to return home and take a breath. And, but in secret, many believe he was drawing up what a free and post-Nova world might look like, releasing several of the former nations, nations which had long since been conquered by Nova Belresca. But it was for naught, for the Chancellor was summoned into the final room of the highest building of their tallest fortress, the Chancellor went in to the shrine of the Novan god himself, Lord Burke. Within the hour it was announced that a new Chancellor of Nova would be needed, and Birkland would be going to war against Pershovia and returning to the Grand Isles. While the war progressed to a stalemate, neither Birkland or Pershovia was able to make any progress. Chancellor Lostick was promoted to this new ruler of Nova Valresca, his first order of business was to form an alliance with Whitecrest to fight off Pershovia in a common cause. While it's not known for sure if the alliance will hold, so far the two leaders are working well together. In their first major battle, named the Last Stand of the 31 Pershovians, after the Pershovian soldiers who bravely defended the Alamo at Clydesdale against a valiant charge by Nova Balresca's marines, and a long siege on the outside of the walls by the forces of Whitecrest. Their bravery sparked in the hearts and minds of Pershovians back home, calling for their greatest admiral to make a return to defend their honor. Will the Whitecrest and Nova alliance hold? Will Birkland join this alliance as well? Could this be the moment when these three great nations join together to create the first ever United Kingdom of the Grand Isles? The people of the trade lands are waiting to find out. And good luck out there, and happy trading, everyone.